Welcome to an edition of Wake Up Niners brought to us by Atrium Health. I'm Matt Swarat, and our special guest today is Byron Dinkins. We call him the banner, part of our Niner basketball coaching staff, and of course, a, a tremendous former UNC Charlotte basketball player. Dink, how are you doing? Doing great. How are you doing, man? Doing fine, doing fine. So, uh, you know, Right now, we just got a lot of a lot of time on our hands, and uh, you know we've spent some time during our our coaches shows throughout the winter talking to you, and you know some of the time that you spent back as a player with the Niners. But I, I think what's going on right now, since sports aren't being played, uh, a lot of folks are tuning in every Sunday night to watch the Last Dance, the documentary on Michael Jordan. And I know you've been watching some of that; it brings back some memories. But uh, at least it gets you a little bit of a basketball fix right now, right? Just a little bit. Uh, besides that, just watching old games and and uh, watching some of the guys we're recruiting and, and watching some of our old games as well. You know, when you when you watch the Last Dance and remember some of the times playing in the league and and playing against Michael and those Bulls teams, what what pops to you, your mind a little bit about some of those matchups and games against Michael? Man, just how great they were as a team uh how great he is as an individual player um scotty as well and and then what dennis brought to the team is it was just three individuals that, that played together and then their team played together uh phil jackson master motivator and uh bringing the team together and, and giving them the players one so uh, it just brings back those memories of how good they are how good they were. You know, they won six championships. Of course, you played against some really, really good teams in the NBA. But what, what was different when you went up against the Bulls on a, on a given night where, okay, you're not playing the, the Warriors, you're not, you're, not playing the, you know, you're not playing the Celtics, but Michael and the Bulls? Um, you knew the, the gym would be packed. Uh, it would be extra media. Um, just the anticipation of seeing him and them hit the floor. And then uh, as a player, you get caught up just watching sometimes, like, is he going to do it? Uh, you, you see some of the stuff on TV, and, and he really does it in person. So, uh, <laughs> um, What's it like watching that in the court? You're out there. You're, I mean, I'm not sure if you're trying to guard him or not, but when he makes one of those moves, what's it like as an opposing player? You must be thinking, how do I stop this guy? Um, just sometimes you become a fan and it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's crazy the, the respect that everybody had for him. Uh, you don't get them started. You don't say anything to him. Um, don't give him any ammunition. Just play hard, try to earn his respect. But you just know at any point he could take over the game, take over the matchup on both ends of the floor. So, it, it's just a for me once in a lifetime thing. You know, when when you watch it, is there something that's maybe popped up in one of the first four episodes that maybe surprised you, you didn't know about? Um, no. Once they started going, I kind of remembered all the all the stuff. Um, it wasn't social media back then. It was get the morning newspaper and and radio talk shows and and just word of mouth so um the things that that stuck out i guess for me was the point in college i don't know if everybody noticed he wore adidas in practice um but caroline was a converse school but he wore adidas in practice he loved adidas the story if you haven't heard that story he loves adidas um and they probably missed out on having him because they didn't give him his own shoe like Nike did. Uh, so that part and just all the Carolina highlights and and then how quickly he adapted to the NBA. Um, it wasn't it wasn't a big learning curve for him. He came in and actually looks like he got better. And then you correlate that to the time from college where you see Dean Smith molded the team aspect and the fundamentals and and all that stuff and and then when you get to the nba your individual talent comes through so those early years and and just all of it just brought back the memories of, of that time 
those of us who know you, we know you're you're quiet, but yet we when you played, you are very you know very very competitive, much like you know Michael. When you played guys like that, what was the trash talking like on the floor? Um, I can't talk and play. <laughs> 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 now there's some just, guys that are pretty good at that. I don't know much about Michael being a trash talk. I'm sorry, he uh, but I know Larry I mean, Bird was pretty. You gotta be the stuff. best. You got he's the best, Larry. Um, I think it was a preseason game or something, and I I don't know how I got switched on Larry Bird in transition or something. And like he looked at me like, "What are you doing?" And it was, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then. Michael, he, he had the ability to have running conversations, different conversations. He could be going at a player. Um, he could be talking to a fan court side. And he could be doing all that stuff and at the same time still be locked in to the game. So he, he definitely won an all-time trash talk. That could Byron, when, <laughs> That's true. You know, when, when you got to the NBA, you've got that ultimate confidence that you can play at that level, of course. Otherwise, you wouldn't have been there. But what was it like the first time you you stepped into Chicago Stadium or the old Boston Garden, the Forum uh, in Inglewood? What were those experiences like the first time you, you went through the locker room tunnel and, and got out of the floor and experienced it, looked up and saw the banners? That must have been really amazing. Very, very much so. Uh, eerie feeling. Uh, you go from having those posters on your wall to all of a sudden you're there. and uh just the thought that I was an NBA player at that time is is still sort of surreal. Um sometimes I, I just can't believe it. I tell a lot of people I'm on my second or third life because uh, I, I lived that dream for a little while. So just to be in those old places, the old Boston Garden, the Forum, uh Chicago Stadium, uh Madison Square Garden. Um, those old places, you see them on TV and then you're there and you just can't believe it. So um, I just felt fortunate at that time. You know, every every arena had their own mystique to it. But I remember being told a story by D. Brown when he was drafted by the Boston Celtics. The first time he was on the floor, it was just him. They gave him a ball and said, you got to spend the next two hours just dribbling and find all the dead spots. How many dead spots were there on that old Boston Garden floor? Only the Celtics know where they are. Uh, <laughs> it, it, that's a true story. Um, it looks real nice on TV, and then you get in there, and it's old and rickety and and rats and is <laughs> no air conditioner in the locker room. Uh, the locker room is very small, and um, it's just the I was coming down and I bounced the ball. And it just stayed there and went back the other way. So <laughs> they know where the dead spots are. You don't. And it's cold. It's, you got the ice under there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's just everything adds up to the Celtics winning. Is there a moment you mentioned thinking back on your days playing in the NBA? Is there a moment or two that stands out that that was a really special night for you? Um, Just at the end of training camp, uh, still not knowing if I had made the team or not. Um, and then I, they, they put me on injury reserve and I was like, what does that mean? And, and John Lucas was like, you made the team, Rook, you, you in the league. And so that part, you know, I just went back to the hotel, called my mom and said, you know, mom, I made it, we made it. And just every night was, a blessing to be sitting there watching and learning and my locker's next to Elijah Wan and I'm watching how he handles everything and how the media and how, just how everything works and every night it's a star uh, and then the guys you don't know about from the smaller school everybody can play so it's not a night off of course your coach was Jeff Mullins with the 49ers and he had such a great a basketball career, winning a championship with the Warriors in the NBA. I think you were his first player to go to the NBA. What was that conversation like with, with Jeff when you called him? You mentioned talking to your mom first, but 
calling Coach Mullins, who gave you the shot to play for the 49ers and then going to the NBA? Um, Coach, I guess, had prepared me for the opportunity. Um, he was always working with me before and after practice on little nuances of the game, uh, the bank shot or – just anything small, minute things, uh, things you could get away with, things he could show you. Um, but just calling him and saying, Coach, I made it. Um, and he was just matter of fact, like, well, that's great, Byron. And, you know, like he had no doubt. Um, I think I had more doubt than he did. Um, but then to come back home and uh, we were in the same conference with the Hornets at that time. So to come here, and play in front of family and friends, um, that was a big deal. Yeah, what was that night? That must have been unbelievable. Um, the first time in town, a um, little overwhelming. Uh, we're staying at the Embassy Suites uh, out on Woodlawn. Uh, I don't know how many ticket requests I had that day. And <laughs> didn't, routine. Never got into my routine for the game uh, because of just so many calls and people coming by the hotel. And so I learned from that. But just to see, just to come out and play and then uh, see everybody after the game, that was a that was different. You know, everybody was saying, hey, you're an NBA player. And I, I just still didn't know what that meant. But just to have that uniform on and, and playing in that league, it, it, it was just unbelievable. You mentioned routine. What was a typical game day like for you, Byron? Uh, for me, game day is uh, up, try to get some breakfast, uh, go to shoot around, get that work in, um, pregame meal, uh, some type of pasta, grilled chicken, a pasta, a baked potato, something like that. Uh, a nap, hour and a half maybe, and then uh, wake up with a little music and, and get to the gym and, and just start going from there. So that never happened when I came to Charlotte the, the first time. <laughs> the second time, <laughs> second time I just said mom got all the tickets and I shut off my phone and, and, and got ready for the game. So what's uh, what's going on these days? I know we're all you know staying at home and trying to social distance, and you know it's going to be a little bit more challenging for coaching staff trying to prepare for the next season. Of course, ours was was cut short this year, but um, 16 wins, man, it was a lot of fun. You, you and I have talked about how this year has kind of mirrored what happened when you when you were a player coming in that first year with Coach Mullins, and the the great improvement in year two, then a you know a chance to go to the NCAA tournament in year three. So you guys are going into year three now, but, you know, times are different. What's it like right now, a typical week for this coaching staff? Uh, just everything from home is, is just different. Everything from the computer. Uh, watch a lot of film. Uh, I just help where I can. Um, coach is doing a lot of recruiting over the phone. And, uh, it, it It's just – I, all I can say is different. And then we get together uh, video or or FaceTime or text and talk through the recruits and the possibilities and, and what's going on with this situation. So it is uh, – the main thing is constant <laughs> constant communication. Uh, and then, I don't know. Go ahead. And then Coach just making sure everybody's all right. So it's, And keeping up with the current guys. Uh, as they finish the semester and and trying to touch them in any way and making sure they are trying to do something physically to stay in some kind of, kind of shape. It's going to be tough, man, not being able to be around their teammates and, and everyone. You mentioned game day routines, but there's, there's everyday routines when you're a college athlete. Just trying to stay with the plan is going to be a challenge, I would think. I think it's very challenging for the guys now that they're at home all day and and they're still in class. So they they got to make sure they get that done. And but they got a lot a lot of time on their hands. Um, so that's 
that's different in a way there. If it was a regular day, then they, they would have a lot more structure. Uh, but now it's just, they just got so much time. What do you do to fill that time and do what you're supposed to do at the same time? <laughs> I've seen some videos, uh, Drew Edwards' mom putting something up recently where he's out there mowing the yard, but doing his lunges at the same time. Trying to get it all in while he's, while he's pushing the mower. That was pretty good. What, what, what have you done to try and pass the time that doesn't include, you know, anything with Niner basketball, but just trying to, to you know, fill your day up? Um, my day pretty much consists of I, I walk about seven, eight miles a day. Um, wow. I, I get five or so in the morning. And then when my wife comes from work, I walk two or three with her in the afternoon, uh, just trying to keep the cardio there. Uh, and then I'm a TV person, so I could catch up on all the shows. And what are you watching right now? Uh, everything. I, I everything that that comes on, I'm watching it. Uh, I'm waiting for All American to come back and. Uh, I can't think of some a lot of these shows, but <laughs> I'm watching. Uh, I guess that comes from time playing in Europe. Yeah, um, where with the downtime, I was just watching movies all the time. Um, we practice twice a day, so there's not a lot of free time. So we're just watching movies and and games and stuff like that. Well, you mentioned your wife Lisa's uh, still working full time. My wife Maddie's still out of the house working. So. Uh, our roles have been reversed, and, and you know I've got the four little kids at home, homeschooling, and you know food and all that stuff. So my days go by pretty quickly. They're full, but I, I kind of feel like I don't know if you if you do the same. That uh, it's almost like being in Vegas because every day you don't know what day it is, uh, you don't know what time <laughs> it is, and, and you look up and all of a sudden it's two thirty in the morning, and and my kids are still up, and and I go to bed thinking just don't burn the place down because. I'm done, <laughs> right? Right. So it's just like being in Vegas, but it's been 45 days. Yeah, you definitely get four days in, and by the, at the end of the day, you look back and see what you did. And it's like that was a full day um, between the yard work, and I think that's the biggest thing now. Everybody got a chance to work in their yards, and uh, my wife now wants to start gardening, so she's got her little. <laughs> flower bed over there she's planting some tomatoes and some other vegetables uh, so <laughs> that's so have you picked up a hobby though? i mean i i've had to really become a much better cook and i've actually got pretty good at it i think my kids are eating the stuff uh, no but, uh, she just she just tell me to take something out of the refrigerator and put it in the sink <laughs> 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 I can hey, well, I wash all the dishes after we eat. Oh, tell me about it. I three loads a day. <laughs> Washing clothes and it, run some errands, try to find something that you couldn't find two days before. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask, you know, your youngest son, Jordan, when we were in uh, Hawaii about a year and a half ago, I know he had started teaching himself how to play the ukulele and he bought one out there and and I've been trying to teach myself how to play the guitar. How's he doing with that thing? He's doing well. He's uh, he playing his keyboard. He's playing his guitar. He's playing his ukulele. Uh, he's just wants to learn all of that stuff. Um, he's uh, he was up in New York, right? He's up in New York. Um, he came home for a little while uh, at the beginning of this thing. Uh, my wife wanted him home, so he got here. Um, I think he's going to go back on – he's looking to go back, I think, on uh, May 15th, he said. Uh, okay. He works at Rockefeller Center, and I think maybe his job will open it back up at that time, so he's looking there. But uh, we'll have him here as long as he, as long as he wants to stay. That's awesome. Hey, before I let you go, of uh, of all the guys on the staff right now, who do you think is handling this stay-at-home quarantine thing the best, and who's just chomping at the bit to get out there and, and don't give somebody a bear hug? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm I'm gonna say I think Fern can adapt to to it all, so he's he's probably not having a tough time. Uh, 
Kimball can't sit still. He's got to get out of there. Uh, and I know Coach is ready to get out live and and, and see some people. And, and, and Vic as well. Everybody um, really miss those guys. We have a good working relationship and the work environment around the office is, is very good. So not seeing everybody every day. Uh, is is different. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. But KP still holds it all together and, and keeps everybody <laughs> knowing what we're supposed to do. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I miss seeing you guys too. And uh, thanks so much for doing this today. Really appreciate it. Hope your family stays healthy and uh, see you guys really soon. No, thank you. And uh, everybody in Niner Nation, hopefully everything will be okay and we'll get back to normal or new normal as normal as we can. Everybody, that's Byron Dinkins, the banner. Thanks for joining us. This edition of Wake Up Niners brought to you by Atrium Health. Join us in the coming weeks. We'll bring you some more Niner content as we stay at home and, and stay safe. And as, as Dink said, we'll get back to Niner athletics very, very soon. I'm Matt Swarat. As always, go Niners.